be puffed up. It says, let no one of you be puffed up. So I am the current ruling priest. I want you to understand it. Don't be puffed up. It says, let no one of you be puffed up. Or, or whatever. But we, we repented from it, and we haven't done it since. So I am the current ruling priest. I want you to understand it. You know, I was I was falling in, and I was being hella niggerish, kind of, you know what I'm saying? Don't be puffed up. It says, let no one of you be puffed up. And we're still giving double honors to the elders of, of Greg Millstone. You know? Murder Apostle Tahar is too old to actually serve as an active priest. Were, they, were these Gentiles right here scattered Israelites that was put abroad that had some type of authority for part of being the hands of? No, and it's not in the Bible. Nowhere. So I'm going to read this again. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom, uh-oh, now I send thee. But for the audience, this is how the Hebrew Israelites read it. They can't keep it real. Delivering thee from Israelites and from Israelites unto whom, now I send thee. We can see clearly that doesn't make any sense. Unto whom now I send thee, watch this, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light because Israel is going to be a light to the Gentiles. That's simple, right? They, the light was off. The light is on now. And from the power of Satan unto Elohim that they might have forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them. And Grippa, who is this Edomite? I was not disobedient of the heavenly vision, but showed first unto Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles, but showed first unto them, right? It was them, Israel, of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. I just showed you on uh, 1 Kings 8 and 41 that God can hear them. King Solomon even prayed that the Most High God, Yahweh, would hear the heathen. Ain't no way around this stuff, though. Verse 21, for this cause, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. They went about to kill this man because he was opening up the salvation for these other nations. Because he was opening up the salvation for these other nations. Because he was opening up the salvation for these other nations. Because he was opening up the salvation for these other nations. That Christ should suffer because they want to play a game. Well, Christ died for the nation of Israel. Yeah, and he also... Was sent for uh on sent his people on a mission to be a light to the Gentiles. If you ask them, I, I, for an example, if you ask them who is God's people, we know they're gonna say Israel. But then you see God telling Egypt, He His people. So they don't. It's clear that they don't even believe what's written in there, man. Yeah. Do you believe that the white man is Esau and Esau has um has no repentance according to the Hebrews twelve and seventeen? Nah, no, nah, I believe uh. What that's dealing with Hebrews 12 and 17, that's dealing with a uh uh the wicked of Esau, not dealing with the whole nation in totality. Nah. No, I believe uh what that's dealing with Hebrews 12 and 17, that's dealing with a uh uh the wicked of Esau, not dealing with the whole nation in totality. I'm not dealing with the whole nation in totality. I'm not dealing with the whole nation in totality. I'm not dealing with the whole nation in totality. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Also, a sincere shalom to you other elders, you Akim, you brethren, you sincere followers of the truth, you, you few sisters, and let me say shalom to the elect. I want to go in this video here of um, this guy uh, Shabar who is a follower well he was initially with formerly with the Sakari and um, the reason why he said he fell out was the exact issue that's going on now he says he went to ask questions about um, Paul and even in the book of Hebrews and of course he said other prophets was going off okay and um and even if he felt that they didn't stick to the guns so to speak so he just got all screwed up and he said you know what with this Sakari is talking about can't be wrong can't be right 
And that's because he actually absolutely threw out the books. And even if there was some discrepancy about some of the prophets and their sayings, you know, and you didn't quite understand it, the whole point of the whole Bible, when you open up every book of the Bible, it is always talking about Israelites from the beginning. Every, every letter of Paul, uh, every uh, book, you go to 1 Corinthians, go to Romans, it's always Paul. It's always um, Paul, so Paul talking about the brethren, the brethren, my kinsmen. Okay? So anyway, this uh, Jake um, Shabar, a couple of things he went into, which, you know, I can't go into all of it. Um, this, you know, basically this man is a product of Sakari, you know. Um, but anyway, he said Paul was opening up salvations uh, for the other nations. And they sought, you know, you know, when they sought to kill him, they wanted to kill him because he was opening up salvation for, to the other nations. Okay? Which is absolutely false because I keep saying this over and over again. That word Gentile is a Latin word. So when he said it doesn't make sense because it says to the Israelite and then to the Israelite and then to the Israelite. No, it's the Israelite and the heathen. The Israelite and the heathen. Just like you have heathen just means non-believers. Those were the words. When you go into the original text, the original word was heathens. And, and in some cases, um, the translations, you did have Gentiles. Or gentles, as they, they used to call it. But then it um, went to heathen because you had what you call heathens. That's all a Gentile is. A Gentile can be a Greek. That is a placement word. So whether it says Jew nor Greek, right? You could say Jew nor Jew. But it was differentiating the, uh, the beliefs. That's why when you go into um, the definition of um, Greek... Well, let's go there real quick. It says here, um, it says Jew or Greek, um, G1672, Helene, right? It says a Greek by nationality, whether native or mainland, or of Greek islands of the coast. So you had Timotheus' father, Titus' father. Hey, Titus was even called a Greek, okay? In a wider sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews. That's where you had a division between Jews and non-Jews, right? They were still Israelites, but you had some that wasn't. And then you had other nations who wasn't Israelites, even by nation, right? That's where the problem came in because we mixed ourselves amongst them. We'll get into that too. It says that made the language and the customs learning of the Greeks their own, right? In a wider sense, the name embraces all nations, not Jews, right, that made the language, customs, and uh, learning of Greeks their own. Now, when you go into the word Hellenist, those were Greek-speaking Jews. So, that would be wrong to say all nations, not Jews. Because you did have Jews that made Greeks their tongue, right? The primary reference is the difference between religion and worship. And that was the difference. Because you had some who believed that they was um, um, Israelites and some that, be, uh, that didn't believe they was Israelites and believed they were Greeks. And then you had some Grecians who practiced being Israelites. Okay? Not to make it complicated. Okay? So, he, this guy, he loves going into the letters of Paul. You know, when the scripture says, I believe in Matthew 5, agree with thine adversary quickly. When he be delivered up to the judge. And we'll also show you Yahweh How he got down. Okay. But let's go to um, uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and 16. It says. But but be it so. I did not burn you. Nevertheless. Being crafty. I caught you with guile. You know. You ever hear that term. By all means necessary. That's where it comes from. Right. He said crafty. With guile, it means you be sneaky. Okay? Being crafty, I caught thee with guile. Let's look up uh, this word guile real quick. Right? Because a lot of you Jakes, you don't understand what Paul went through and what he had to do, whatever it was he had to do to get his message across. 
as I always said, you live in a house and you got a, a landlord who's a Christian and they despise Hebrew, you know, be you being a Hebrew Israelite, obviously you're going to stand for what you believe, but you got to put on that Superman Clark Kent. So you got to talk to the, your, your, your landlord, so to speak, with guile. And he comes in and start talking about the Bible. You can talk about the Bible too. He doesn't got to know you're a Hebrew Israelite. But you have something in common. And that's that book. Anyway. Um, I quote thee with Guile. G1388. It says here. Crafty deceit Guile. I mean it's. Um, a decoy. Meaning to decoy. To trick. Right. So you mean to tell me he wasn't going to uh, trick Agrippa? Oh, King Agrippa, I wish thee to be a Christian. Okay. Let's go on to Matthew 13. Let's see what Yahawashah did. Uh, 13 and 9. Which Yahawashah, in a sense, um, he didn't have to really use guile. But what he did do was... Uh, he had that sharpness and those parables, okay, which tricked, literally tricked people up. He didn't have to be trickery, but the parables. It says, who have an ear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Right, because you got to read the whole thing, the parable, okay. He said, why speakest thou in parables? Because, you know, he spoke parables. Goes on to say, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, uh, kingdom of heaven, but to them is not given. So he said, right here, hey, I spoke to them in parables. This is what Paul kind of did with Agrippa. Right? A little different, but Paul knew how to handle situations. Okay? He says, um, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. For, you know, and it goes on to say, for whosoever hath to him shall it be given, and he, sh and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not, from whom shall, shall be, him shall be taken away. So this is what this guy did he got taken away right so the, the disciples came and asked him why do you speak to them in parables with a question mark and he says because it's given to you so these parables this this truth is re, uh, a part of that a lot of Jake don't know what's going on they don't know about the uh, this uh, thing that's happening they don't have no clue so it's not it's a mystery to them that's why he said it's given to you to know the mysteries, but unto them it's not given. Anyway, going on to the strangers, he said something about the strangers, first kings. But, you know, when you go into, um, who was it? Uh, Moses um, had a son named Gershom, which Gershom meant stranger. Okay? And it, and it means I've been a stranger in a strange land. There was, and he was even called an Egyptian. You know? So... Let's go to, uh, what is it, um, that he had uh, Isaiah 13, when he said he called the Egyptians, um, he called his people the Egyptians or something like that. That's because this guy don't go into the text, man. It says, um, let's go to it, Isaiah 19.25, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands and Israel, mine inheritance. Which, if you want to get technical, everybody is of the Most High. The Most High, the, the, the Most High owns all people, but He has a chosen people. But then, when you go into this text, when you go into this text, it's not like the Most High created. Um, he created all nations, everybody. He, he's even scriptures even said it. He even created created the wicked for the day of evil. So the, the people of the world belongs to, to the Most High, right? But he has a chosen people. But let's go into the Bishop's Bible of 1568. It says, which Lord of hosts have blessed, saying, blessed is my people of Egypt, right? The Cloverdale Bible of 1535. 
and the Lord of hosts shall bless them, saying, Bless is my people of the Egyptians, Assyria, and the work of the, uh, I can't understand that, Hodeus, it's supposed to be hands, they spell it, this is Old English, uh, but Israel, mine inheritance. So it says, blessed of my people, blessed is my people of the Egyptians. Let's get better. Let's go to this other text. Out of the translations from Aramaic. Translations from Aramaic. Let's see what it says. It says, Him whom Lord Jehovah of hosts blessed says, blessed, blesses and says, bless, blessed, are my people in Egypt and the work of my hands who are the Assyria and the inheritance Israel okay how much more we got get clear than that then he goes on to say this guy I'm just trying to go through this he said he, he, he um, um, Esau is um, Hebrews 12 and 17 and this is dangerous of throwing out a book of Hebrews because now Sakari can't fight this book. He threw it out. Which is a comprise of different books. I mean, di uh, different um, sayings from David. And only when you go into the New Testament, Yahweh spoke of things in the Old Testament. So I don't know why they just threw it out. Anyway, Malachi 1 and 1. The burden of the word of the Lord Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet saith, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob and I hated Esau. And it sounds like just one, right? Then it goes on to say, and laid his mountains and his heritage. So this guy said, no, it wasn't talking about the whole nation, just some of the wicked of East Edom. And laid his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom has said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them. The board of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Period. Need more proof? Let's go to Obadiah 1. And uh, they, I guess they got to throw out the book of Obadiah now. See, this is the problem with these false doctrines. Right? Let's go to the book of Obadiah. This is part called Deliverance of Israel. Right? Um, 1 and 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house, when you're dealing with the house, you're dealing with the nation. And, and, and the house of Joseph, a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord have spoken it. That's all I have on that, Shalom.